Right, but I have to say, you look amazing in an amazing shape. You look to be in an amazing, amazing shape. I have never ever seen a 60-year-old look like you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, so, so what, what is your secret of, uh, of being so fit and looking so good? Uh, eating very little. It's very important not to uh, overeat. There's this real tendency amongst athletes, especially as they get uh, older, to continue to eat like the way they did when they were young and competing and pushing hard. Uh, you, the, uh, the, the, it, it's, it's a system called systematic undereating where you just purposely try to eat as little as possible. Is it eat, stop, eat diet? Uh, well, I've actually used that. I think that's, by the way, that's a great diet. Uh, also, intermittent fasting, uh, Mark and Birkin, the, uh, the, uh, the Swede, okay. that, um, he's a fitness model, okay. but uh, he, his, uh, his concepts for um, eating are quite sound. Uh, just getting as lean as possible and staying that way. Once you start to put on the weight, cause, you know, you've seen it. So many of the older guys, they just really let themselves go because they still continue to eat like a young guy. And uh, it's a big mistake. That will undermine your health and your your looks and your longevity faster than any other single thing. So I, I do quite a bit of fasting. Uh, I usually won't eat till later in the day. I try to rest my digestive tract. But even young guys could do very well to eat a little bit less. So you don't subscribe to, um, uh, to frequent eating methods, even though in small, uh, even, even in small amounts, you don't do uh, frequent eating. Not at all. Now, I do know that there are some guys that get quite lean and, and do well in that. But over the long haul, that has an aging effect on the body. Your digestive system never gets a rest. It's constantly working all the time. So you're just chronically digesting food, always. You never get quite the, uh, the assimilation that you could from eating a slightly larger meal and then having a long period of time. Uh, I, I believe in at least four to five hours between each, e each meal minimum and give the digestion a rest the other the other big mistake when people get sick or they don't feel well they'll continue to eat but this is a signal for you to fast and allow the body to heal itself because what digestion takes a lot of energy by the way a lot of people don't realize that you know you burn a lot of calories just even digesting your food and it takes energy when you are free from digestion it's amazing how much energy you can have and your body is also free to eliminate toxins and to heal itself. Your body can heal itself from, from any ailment, any illness. I haven't been to a doctor in 35 years. You know? I, I always wondered about that because uh, you know, there are two schools of thought. One school of thought says, okay, you're sick, you need to eat to get well, to get energy. And the other school of thought says, no, you don't eat nothing, let the digestive system rest, and then the body will take care of itself. So, so you subscribe to the, to the second opinion. Yes, generally speaking, the people that eat are also taking a lot of over-the-counter over drugs and medicines, which cover the symptoms. But, you know, eventually the body will heal itself, but it just takes longer when you're, when you're eating. Um, look at nature. I, I used to keep a lot of pets and so forth. Every mammal will stop eating when it's sick. A cat, a dog. Uh, do you know what ferrets are? Ferret, they, yeah, yeah. They, I used to keep ferrets for the kids. They're funny little animals. They're really cool. Uh, but, you know, any, any of my pets, when they would get sick, they would stop eating. They just would, you know, lie down, wait to whatever it is that was distressing them would pass, and then you'd see them eating again. But people freak out, you know. This, there's a huge fear of just missing a meal or something, you know. It gets put in your head from a very early age, but it's, you know. But if you really want uh, one of the secrets to the fountain of youth, it got to be infrequent eating, eat very little, and breakfast is not the most important meal of the day. That's when your body is in the biggest process of elimination from the metabolic waste from the night before. And you'll find your health will just improve a lot when you cut down on the amount of food you eat and the frequency of feeding. But the second for, for really good aging is some of the stuff we're doing in the seminar. The uh, biomechanical drills, the joint mobility is so important, man. And people just are too lazy to do it. But man, it is really awesome. And you, and you have uh, joint mobility instruction, instructionals that are available online, right? Yes. And this is not just a ploy to sell instructional. The reason I instruct it, the reason I teach it, is because I believe in it 
and it is just so good. But be that as it may, yes, I do sell them. Can and you can you can you tell us the website where yeah. it can be found? Sure. It's uh, Maxwell S C S C for strength and conditioning dot com. Maxwell S C dot com. Okay. Uh, one, once we we're on the subject on of um, infrequent eating, I have heard that many people. I don't know if this is true or not, but I have heard that many people who have tried regular methods, chemotherapy of curing cancer, and the methods failed. They were cured just by, uh, they stopped eating and only drank some kind of ju uh, herbal juices and stuff like that. Have you ever heard, have you, have you heard something about this? One of my early mentors, Dr. Gregory Ellis, who's a PhD in biochemistry and a board certified nutritionist from Temple Medical School, was diagnosed with inoperable brain cancer and was basically told he was going to die. And he started doing a lot of alternative treatments, and the cancer went into complete remission. Part of that was fasting. Uh, he was doing all sorts of exotic therapies. And uh, he had a golf ball-sized tumor behind his eye, and it shrank to like the size of a little tiny BB, and no problems whatsoever. That's one case I know of personally, but I have read, I've seen. Um, the medical world, I think, is based on Band-Aid approach. They know nothing about, you know, holistic medicine, about how to prevent things from happening. Uh, and it's always about giving you some type of drug or something to mask the pain or the, uh, do surgery. You know, for the most part, for any type of organic disease, uh, the medical world is completely useless. Where where modern medicine is quite excellent is like emergency medicine. If if you have a car accident or you get hit uh, by a car on your bike or you know you break your arm in in martial arts or something, they're fantastic for like repairing the body this way. But when it comes to actually organic disease, it, it's a waste. A cold, a flu, a fever, or whatever, you know, it, it's just total waste. Right. So. Can you give me an example of your uh, how you eat daily? How your uh, day looks like? Uh, when do you eat? What do you eat? What you what do you not eat? Well, I'm on the road a lot, so you know it will vary a little bit. Um, but generally speaking, I try not to have uh, my first meal to about eleven o'clock each day. I usually arise from bed anywhere between five and seven, depending on the time zone. You know, because I'm between the time zones a lot, but I still try to get, always get up early. Um, I don't take any supplements anymore. I think you can get everything you need from nature. You know, there's no animal on the planet that needs supplements, and most supplements are hype, so I gave all that up. Um, and then I'll have my first meal. It's usually uh, fresh, raw fruits when I can get it, and with uh, some dairy. I like yogurt, usually, a soured milk with the probiotics and so forth. Uh, that's my favorite. When you say fresh, uh, when you say fresh food, uh, you mean vegetables and fruit, right? You don't eat meat. Yeah, fresh fruit, you know, like fruit that's in season, oh, okay. hopefully locally produced, organically okay. grown without herbicides, pesticides, chemical fertilizers, mm -hmm. and so forth. You know, now occasionally I'll have instead a starch meal. It could be oatmeal, like cooked oatmeal. Uh, I'm curious to try the Serbian. Uh, what is it, Seminola? Seminola. There's the Serb dish that. Uh, Stefan ate this morning that I can't. I, I don't know, but we'll check it out. Yeah, it looked quite good. Yeah. It was a cereal of some type, you know? Okay. Um, and then in the evening, I will have a uh, some type of protein, usually in the form of chicken or uh, a meat with a salad, occasionally cooked vegetables. But I combine the foods very carefully. Uh, I find that for best digestion, I won't have a starch in a meat, like bread and meat, or potatoes and meat. If I'm going to eat starch, which I do occasionally, I'll have a starch meal, only bread and a salad, or only sweet potatoes, one of my favorite, and a salad. But I wouldn't have meat and bread and potatoes and a salad and cooked foods. It's too tempting to overeat. It overstimulates the taste buds, and you'll find yourself just eating way more food than you need. And if I eat a starch, I only have one starch. 
Okay, and... Uh, Basic food combining rules. Uh, it works uh, really well for me. You have a lot less tendency to overeat. And the interesting thing is, you'll find that your, your appetite will be satisfied much faster, and you just automatically eat less. You don't feel bloated in your stomach when you, you, know, when you sleep. You feel quite excellent. Uh, is this dependent, this um, not combining uh, of foods, is it dependent on the, on the blood type? or Because there there is a blood type yeah, diet. For your blood type, yeah. Uh, I've read that. Uh, I, I couldn't find any evidence whatsoever to support it. You mm -hmm. know, It was just a really good theory that some guy came up with. But there's certainly no scientific evidence. You know, I'm not always stone-cold scientist myself. I mean, you know, I will explore things that... Uh, even science doesn't understand, especially with the uh, discovery of quantum physics and so forth. Uh, it's kind of changed the whole model. And I do realize that studies are flawed many times. Many times scientific studies are paid for by a special interest group to come up with the right answers. And I've even known scientists that have lied, outright lied about results they've gotten in studies. So, you know, you can't always believe. But... I have experimented enough to know that this works extremely well for me, and I do a lot of online personal training. I have literally had hundreds of clients over the years who have really done well on combining the foods and eating infrequently, uh, really well. Lost a lot of body fat, uh, excess fluid in the body, and found themselves eating less and feeling more satisfied, and uh, it, it works quite well. Uh, when we are on the subject of infrequent eating, uh, there is this diet that's really popular, the warrior diet. Uh, do you know anything about it, and what do you think about it? Uh, I know Ori Hoffmegler. He's a really interesting guy. Um, definitely a warrior himself. I mean, you know, he's been there. Um, the warrior diet is basically a myth. It's just something that Ori made up. You know, it's, it's, it's a good story, but um, we know that the Roman army did not eat that way. And even if they did eat that way, was it because they wanted to or because they had to? <laughs> and uh, yes, they were successful, you know. But there was other successful models also, you know, like the Mongol, the Mongols, you know. They conquered the then known world, had a completely different dietary system, you know. So, you know, it it it, it makes a good story. However, there is something to uh, systematic undereating, which the diet. It's not a lot different than the intermittent fasting diet. Um, originally, it was pretty hardcore where you would just have an under-eating phase, an over-eating phase. Uh, I found that that over-eating phase tends to make you feel really bloated and pretty bad, man. So, um, Ori has even since changed his ideas a little bit. In some of his newer books, he advocates eating earlier in the day, small protein meals to kind of satisfy and keep the blood sugar stabilized and doesn't advocate quite so much eating such a big, heavy meal a night. So even his later books have gotten away from the warrior diet. So even he changed a little bit. Um, about, uh, the, about the food, uh, not combining foods, uh, we, have been thought, we have been taught that you should combine uh, carbohydrates with protein so the insulin wouldn't spike. But what you do and how you get your foods is totally different and you seem to be in a great shape as well. So do you think that uh, this combination of protein and carbohydrate is not actually needed to stabilize your insulin levels? Not at all. Uh, throughout the day, yes, but it doesn't have to be in the same meal. You know. So I'm not a nutritionist or a diet expert by any means, but you know, I have been feeding myself for, for uh, well, I guess my mother fed me for the first few years of my life. But certainly for the last half century, I've, I've managed to figure out what works best for my body. I would say this. The best diet is the one that you can live with. But I will all say this. If you're fat, your diet's not working for you. If your pinch of skin on your stomach is bigger or isn't the same as the pinch on your face, you're too fat. Okay, uh... That's, just, that's always been a standard for fighters and wrestlers all over the world. There's no, you know, so the proof is in the pudding. Okay, people have a certain diet, they like to eat a certain way. Okay, if, if you're lean and you're not getting sick and you're healthy, good. Don't change nothing. If you're getting colds, 
you're getting sick more than let's say once a year, uh, you know, and you're 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 carrying a lot of extra body fat, or you're really skinny and you don't have any muscle. Well, obviously you you don't know how to feed yourself and your diet's not working. So, you know, there's nothing to argue about. You need to find something different, man. Uh, would you would you uh, advocate this this diet to professional fighters as well? Oh yeah, I have, absolutely. Most people eat out of habit. It's called habit hunger, and most Americans in particular are what I call food drunkards or food inebriates. They're literally drunk on food. It, it's like they, they just have to get their fix. I see enormously fat people sitting down just like eating all the time. It's like they don't need to eat at all. Even at the hotel, you know, this weekend in Serbia, it's like these really big fat guys at the buffet. It's like, wow, what are you doing, dude? I mean, he'll have... Before he even sits down, he'll have like three plates just filled with food. There's no way he needs so much. It, part of it is just pure greed, you know, a greediness. And, you know, we were talking about, uh, you know, not making a big footprint on the planet and living green. Well, it's very greedy to use more natural resources than what you need. And when you overeat and you're big and you have a lot of fat, you're basically using more than is your fair share. You're using natural resources way more than you need. 